Lord, we give you thanks for your holy word, which is good and true and light. And now, Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. For we ask this in the name of Jesus. Amen. A Christian friend of mine said that we help ourselves and we help others when we nurture thankfulness in our lives. Becoming more thankful has helped me a lot, so that I like to talk about the idea of thankfulness thinking. Based on Paul's words to the Thessalonians that we read, our main text, in everything give thanks, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Here are four things we can do this Thanksgiving Sunday to nurture thankfulness thinking in our lives that'll result in great blessing to us and blessing for us. The first thing we have to remember is that we're to thank God. It's really implied in Paul's commands to give thanks. It's a command to thank the Lord and is obvious, but it's so very important to know that our primary thanks is always to God. Thanking God sets Christian thanksgiving apart from just having a positive attitude or just having a feeling inside because it's with our volition, it's with intentionality that we're coming before God and saying, God, thank you for this gift. We recognize that the good things that happen in our lives are from his strong hand. No matter how positive our thoughts, we don't have the power to control reality. No, that province belongs to God, who orders and who provides according to his will. Now, some people might talk about Thanksgiving apart from God, and without the Lord, though, we're left with thanking ourselves, which is never uh, an open road for us. And of course, we wanna be thankful for others for what they give to us. And yet, even when we're thanking others for the good that they give, we recognize that it's the Lord who ultimately provides. The Lord loves us so very much and he has good intentions toward us and he blesses us because he's provided abundantly for us. And so we come to him and say, Lord, I'm gonna recognize that the gifts that I have in my life, they're from you. So thank God in your life. He cares about you so very much. He's blessed you and he's blessed me with gifts in our lives that might appear normal and mundane, but they're really from his strong and gracious and generous hand. We don't get the things we have by luck or by karma. No, they're from the Lord. They're with great intentionality. He's given us these countless blessings in our lives. And so we can look at different things God's given us, relationships with family members, relationships with friends, the material things we need, need from day to day, the daily bread that we pray for. We realize, you know, I pray for this in the Lord's Prayer, but God, you have indeed provided it for me. And we know that he's given us his very self in Jesus Christ, who died to pay for all of our sins on the cross and rose again. See the good things that you have this Thanksgiving is from the Lord. Every smile, every meal, every sunrise, the warmth of your home, and every blessing, and we can say to the Lord, thank you frequently in return. So that's the first thing, four ways to nurture Thanksgiving this Thanksgiving season in our lives. Uh, the first thing is to thank God. The second is to remember to be thankful even in the hard times. Even when it's difficult, remember to be thankful in those times. Paul wrote in 1 Thessalonians 5.18, we should give thanks in everything. He said, in everything, give thanks. No matter the circumstance or condition, whether in pleasure or times of pain, there's always something and more than one thing that we can be thankful for in our lives. This ever-present calling that we have to, think, to thanksgiving fixes our eyes on the Lord instead of only what we're experiencing and feeling in the moment that might be very hard for us to deal with. And through that, uh, through thanking the Lord, he lifts us up above what we're going through, the mess that we sometimes find ourselves in, the mire. He lifts us above that to be able to see a higher purpose in him and to receive a comfort even in hardship. We don't know all the reasons why God allows everything in our lives to try and test us. We know some of them from scripture. We know the general rubric that he has a good intention for us to make us more like Christ, but we don't know all the attending details and uh, we have to trust him with those things. And yet we know that he's lovingly disposed toward us, that his eye is upon us even in the midst of the storm and that he has some good for us that's gonna be a blessing for us 
in some way through even uh, very difficult experiences. Find good things to be thankful for in hard times. If we don't do that, we tend to become bitter. But when we find things to be thankful for, it changes so much of our experience. I came to better, better to appreciate what I thought were the small things in life when I was going through hardship. We don't always understand our circumstances or even the feelings and desires we have through them. Some things are really hard for us to deal with, but if we could be intentional about being thankful for certain things, even in hardship, the Lord will use that in our lives to help get us through. And so we can come out the other side and say, Lord, I remember what that was like. Sometimes we forget. Sometimes we go through a hard time and we forget how hard it was for us because it's not that hard anymore. But we could try to think back and say, Lord, I remember that was a very difficult time. And yet I remember that you got me through and I'm so thankful. And so uh, four ways to nurture thankfulness thinking in our, in our lives today. The first is to thank God and realize he's the giver of these gifts. Every good and perfect gift comes down from him as the father of lights. The second is to be thankful in the hard times. And the third thing is to see thanksgiving as part of God's will for us. Paul wrote that thanksgiving, he said in 1 Thessalonians 5.18, is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. However else we think that God is guiding us in our lives, we have this sure word of what his will is for us. And I remember back sometimes asking myself, well, what is God's will for me? And I didn't know a lot about what the future held because those things are the secret things of God, at least a lot of what's, what's held for us in the future. We know the contours of it, we know where we're gonna end up, but we don't know all the specifics. But what I should have done is said, well, this is God's will for me now, to be thankful. However else we think God is guiding us, we have that sure word of his revelation to be thankful to him. The Greek word translated will is thelema, and it means will or desire. And so when we talk about God's will, sometimes we talk about the sovereign will of God, which is whatever comes to pass. Other times we talk about the revealed will of God, and that's what God says is good for us in our lives, what he wants for us or wants us to do. So the word will here, I believe, refers to his revealed will. This is what he wants for us in our lives. This Thanksgiving, see Thanksgiving, see the giving of thanks and having gratitude to the Lord as part of God's will for you. He knows that gratitude will help us deal with our situations in life in a healthy way. And so he wants us to be thankful because he cares about us so much. And as we have that heartfelt gratitude, the Lord will bless us with a lasting joy that's going to transcend the changing tide of our circumstances, experiences, and feelings. If you feel burdened today, you could say, uh, we could say this, we could say, Lord, I give you, uh, Lord, I give this to you, I give you thanks for your care. Maybe we're struggling with something that is a burden to us. Well, the Bible says to cast our cares upon the Lord because he cares for us, to, to give him our burdens and leave them in his hands. And I know sometimes we have a hard time doing that because those things are upon our hearts and minds. What we could do is we could say, Lord, I give this to you. Thank you for your care. And we might have to do that maybe a hundred times one day if something is really drilling down on us and pressing on our minds. But as we come to do that and we get used to leaving things in God's hands and thanking him for his care, well, the burden's gonna be lessened. We're gonna have a better time dealing with it. It'll be better for us. So four ways to nurture thankfulness thinking in our lives. This Thanksgiving, the first is to thank God. The second thing is to be thankful during hard times. The third thing is to see Thanksgiving as God's will. And the last thing is to be thankful for Jesus. In this verse, in 1 Thessalonians 5.18, Paul emphasized Jesus's kindness toward us in, relation to, in relationship to Thanksgiving when he said that it's God's will for us to be thankful in Christ Jesus. The Lord knows us. Jesus came among us being born into this world and experienced suffering in earthly life to bring us into this wonderful position before God the Father, where we're now reconciled to God through Jesus. God the Son came and undertook for us 
The Bible says, for the joy that was set before him, and that means that he had joy as he had set his heart and mind on saving us. He enjoyed that this would be redeeming us and that he would bring us to himself and bring us to God the Father through it. So in this greatest wonder, he chose to receive all of our evil and shame upon himself. He took nail-driven grief and punishment to completely forgive us of everything we've ever done wrong and everything we ever will do wrong. He forgives us even when we're not thankful. And so the Lord came to us. In the parable of the lost sheep, Luke wrote uh, the words of Jesus when Jesus said, what man among you, if he has a hundred sheep and has lost one of them, the Lord is concerned about the sheep that is lost. He said, what man among you, if he has a hundred sheep and has lost one of them, does not leave the 99 in the open pasture and go after the one which is lost until he is found it. So that's the seeking love of God, that he seeks us out, that he loves us so very much, even when we're running far into the night, that the Lord comes after us. And in that story, it says that uh, he came and found that sheep and he laid the sheep upon his shoulders and began to rejoice. And then he called together his friends and neighbors saying, rejoice with me for I have found the sheep, my sheep, which was lost. And that's what the Lord has done for us. He came after you when you were going the wrong way. He embraced you with nail pierced hands of forgiveness and he put you on his shoulders and he began to rejoice over you. And he calls the angels of heaven to join him in the chorus. Well, the Lord loves you. We need to be thankful for Jesus because he loved us so very much. And he presently sympathizes with us as well. He sympathizes with us. He knows us. He knows our struggles. And he's with us now and forever. So this Thanksgiving, know that the Lord has joy over you. It was his joy to usher you into his kingdom with comforting words. Even as he said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they're doing. It was Jesus's joy to suffer for us and come to us with this mercy. And he sympathizes with us. He loves us and he prays to his father for us. Shouldn't we therefore have joy in thanking him for his gifts? No matter your faults or failures, let's joyfully say this Thanksgiving, Jesus, thank you for accepting me and have that confidence in the Lord. So this Thanksgiving, appreciate the Lord's gifts and let's be thankful in return. Let's thank God for these gifts, knowing he's the giver of every good and perfect gift. Let's be thankful in the hard times, knowing that he's present with us and working through us. Let's see Thanksgiving as part of the will of God that's good for us. And let's be thankful for Jesus, the one who has saved us, our great God and Savior who's undertaken for our redemption. And as we come to the Lord with this Thanksgiving with thankfulness in our hearts, he's going to bless us. We're going to gain a great sense of his blessing that's going to benefit us greatly at this time of year. And we're going to be able to accomplish the good that he has that's going to really resonate with our souls and be beneficial for us. Let's go to the Lord in prayer this morning. Thank you, God, for your wonderful gifts that you've given us in our lives. Thank you for this week that we can focus on the benefits of what you have done. Lord, may we have joy this week with our families and friends. Lord, may each one who we gather with this Thanksgiving be touched by your Holy Spirit, have a sense of your gifts and your provision. And Lord, may we have a sense of your deliverance too, as the first pilgrims did in the wilderness, Lord, and, uh, and your provision for them. May we remember, Lord, that we stand upon the shoulders of others who have come before us, Lord, whom you've worked in and through, and may we have that testimony of thanksgiving in our hearts, for we ask this in the name of Jesus. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. In the name of God the Father, and God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please stand for the doxology. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him.